Hi folks, I'm here as you can see at Mantic headquarters and I'm here with Ronnie Renton Hi, and we're here to chat about um, Kings of War predominantly and the end of the Slow Grow campaign, the Clash of Kings, the um, the Summer campaign and what the future holds. So Ronnie, yeah, um, Slow Grow campaign, yep. what's your thoughts on it from well, your side? Been great. I mean lovely, I, what was lovely there was one gang in Australia, also, yeah. I got my pictures, I've got some, I've been, I got involved too, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> get it up on yours but I didn't mean to. Because it, you just need something to get you started sometimes, don't you? I'd hit a hobby rut. I hadn't bathed for ages. And then I saw the new Ravens coming through. Yeah. Uh, we had a young lad doing some internship, working off 3D machines. So I kind of paid him some 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 backhanded cash and said, <laughs> I need a couple of those before the plastics arrive. <laughs> and it just gave me that impetus to get a, a squad of dwarf clansmen and the, and the dwarves on Ravens up on there. Brilliant. And, and, and yeah. so I think they're fantastic. And they're really important. The hardest thing about Kings of War... Is painting 2,000 points. Yeah, that's it. We, we were literally just chatting before we started recording about that sort of aiming for that sort of that ambush level just to get, your, get your foot in the door, paint a few <laughs> units, and before you know it, you've got the wind behind your sails a bit. And it beats a downhill. The, the, yeah. hard, the first 500 points is the hardest. Yeah. You also need a unit or two. Yeah. You know, if you're playing a skirmish game, playing Dread Bull, you can play five figures, up, eight figures yeah. up. Bit of paint on them, start playing them. I and mean, it's a joy to just keep adding the layers, but you can play. You need a couple of units. It's not a hero's game. Yeah. So every almost every other game is easier, mm. but there's nothing more satisfying than yeah. seeing that unit and then the next one and then you play. But I think that's why Ambush has been a joy. Yeah. Because it's just lowered that. And when we started, hey, bring your King's War, bring your Warhammer Army, King's War, yeah. Over. Yeah, bring your Warhammer Army over. What have you got? Let's just get you involved. Always with a view that we wanted people to transition to our Northern Alliance, to Night Stalkers. But you need that. Even if you're a committed player, you go, well, look, Clash of Kings is three months away. Yeah. But you can't start an army three months and think you're going to have time enough to paint it, play it, tweak it, yeah. play it again, tweak it. And be going in competitive. Yeah. So if you're turning up going, I want to win this, you need a year. Yeah. And I know people, so a slow grow a year out is just a great way of getting you started. And then it's an easier to add a unit and add a unit yeah. and then play. So Ambush has been great. And I think you've done a great job. And everyone that's done it, yeah. I hope you're happy with the results because it's, yeah. it's the only way you can paint an army is how do you eat an elephant? That's it, exactly. A bit at a time. Yes. And, and, the, and the plan, I guess, was um, obviously working together on this was to, was to do this slow grow just leading up to your summer campaign as well, or end of summer campaign, yeah. um, which means that if people have got a few units together, they've got enough to play an ambush game and they can get involved in the campaign. Great. Well, there's two, and there's two big things about this. I think the, you know, yours was almost the forerunner to one, a huge big Kings of War recruitment drive. Yeah. Going into the pandemic, we were spreading like wildfire. Word of mouth was out there. It was in US gaming stores. There was Mantic Mondays going on. There was gaming nights. And people see these lovely battles and they wander over and they say, what's this? Yeah. You say, oh, funny you should say that. Well, here's the free rules. Here they are online. Download them at where you go. And it's just that word of mouth because you need someone to just welcome you into a big old game. That stopped. Everyone in the pandemic, you, the tournament scene, you know, a month ago, the US Masters was the biggest event the world had ever seen. 108 players, best of the rest, US Masters. Fantastic event. Everyone had a lovely time. That's going to be beaten in a week or two's time yeah. with 153 players at the US and UK Clash of Kings. And I'm sure the US are then going to come back hard <laughs> at it next year. The community itself is super excited, the companion, the vaults. There's so much going on. Three armies released this year, tweets. Yeah. But that we need to get get it out there again. Go come and hey, come come and join us. Yeah, come and join us. So the slow grow was a forerunner to a big recruitment drive. We've got free rule books. We've got the campaign. We've got, so there's. Well, I'm going to talk about that a bit more in a second. But there's a big recruitment drive coming, and alongside that, we're finally ready. We kind of just started for the pandemic with Help Is Rift. When we started third edition, it was you are in charge of this story. Yeah, we have a map. It will change. You are coming on a 10-year journey with us with your gaming hobby because it takes a year to paint an army. So then you want to play a few times with it. But the campaigns will move the narrative on. The, no the novels will hit. Yeah. The Armada bits in it. The games you play. And then 10 years from now, we'll all go and go, my God, look at that map. Yeah. Look at it now. The abyss has changed. The, the voids changed. This army's come in. We're going to open a whole new bit of the map when, when Full Vision comes out. You go, oh my God, and that was coming. But... 
you're going to all play it. So, so the joy of the summer campaign is we wanted people to have some soldiers so you could participate. So you go, oh, I was on the goody side yeah. and I want to be part of this and have, enjoy it and read it and, and get immersed in, in this story that our community is shaping. It's amazing how much that, that law and background actually feeds into kind of recruitment and stuff. Because it's something I think people, people take for granted with th things like kind of Warhammer and 40k, that th there's, there's years and years, 20 odd years of kind of background stories and stuff. And newer games tend not to have that, but but Kings of War is getting a bit of age behind it now as well. It's also getting a bit of kind of like sort of history and its law and its background, the novels that the, the the stuff that's in the um sort of in the last edition of the rule book, but you can download it all for free online and yep. get all oh. of the law in the background. Yeah. Like sure. that that's becoming really rich and, and the stuff with the campaigns feeding into <coughs> that as well just shows how far the game's come. I, and I think when you play a game and you live through a campaign, that is a story that lives with the rest yeah. of your life. You know, yeah. I've done it with historicals, I've done it with, you know, fantasy sci-fi games. But when you are part of that planet blowing up, that and it becomes lore and you see it. Yeah. You know, the abyss has gone, everyone remembers from the last one, when the Brotherhood kind of crumbled as a as a formulated empire and broke up. Yeah. Oh my god, I was there, I remember that. Now that's ancient history. The new people are like, what, they were ever a race, I don't know. <laughs> Well, there's going to happen again. Yeah. You know, the Twilight Kingdom are going to arrive. We know that. But are they going to be coming everywhere? Or are they, just, are they going to be limited? Are the good guys going to hold them back? Or are they going to really mess them up? Yeah. With a load of void cages, void gates. So, so when you play it, when you read it, it becomes part of your life just as it's part of the of the, of the game's life. Yeah. It's part of the law. And what's really great now is, you know, we've got enough players all around the world that are engaging with it and enjoying it and therefore it, it we we run the kind of spine of the narrative yeah but the fun bits of the games you play yeah are the or what happens on the fridays and you often see the community will go right we're all going to fight for this area we're going to win this and 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 that's what we're getting excited about and it's getting some momentum yeah. in there and you know go, we're going to be doing one a year we've now got you know elliot's building these things so we can just yeah. run them we'll start sci-fi ones next year too so we're really going to be able to say oh, you're in charge of I'll totally charge where the story goes. Yeah. But you, you it's going that way, but it can go that way or this yeah, way. You can and, guide it. Yeah. And, and, and there's going to be zigzags. And it's for real. You know, yeah. it's for real. We're not... Those guys win. That That's where the void gates are. Yeah. That's where they are. And they're right on chill and they're putting a threat. And then we'll say, right, if this happens, you know, this is going to happen. So I think there really is a a lot of good, fun things starting to add depth. Yeah. You know, with the Twilight Kin, uh, even with the Halflings. Uh, we put real backstories and, you know, they split away from the, from reorder and said, yeah. no, no, we've had enough of you. We're doing our own thing now. Here's where we are. So can... all these things just layer up and yeah. layer up. And, you know, we all forget it took more than 30 years. It yeah. started out as a kind of you know, me too, kind of Tolkien world. And then it found its own way. And we're doing the same. You start yeah. with dwarves, elves and humans, and then you start. You, 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 can, you can build on that one. Once you get people comfortable with a kind of a, a situation, then you can kind of go off with weird and wonderful. And, and you throw things. Armada in. Yeah, exactly. You know, you throw Vanguard in. Yeah. And, and, and you throw stories in. And what I think we do want to do, we want to have some more hero narratives. Yeah. Because I think that really binds us to an action. I think we're thinking that probably every year in our world will be 10 years in Panithal. Yeah. We're kind of thinking that, so, you know, something will happen that's big, that will have a lead in yes. and a lead out. Yeah. You know, we've got narratives going on that'll run along that. We just go, this is happening. You know, the dwarf civil war is happening. You'll find out why at some point that's a big reveal. But that's rumbling on. But it has this effect. Yeah. You know, and we do is what we do for the abyssal dwarfs. This is what we do for free dwarfs, you know. So it's it, it's amazing how much it does affect your like that that lore and background can affect your hobby and the things that you get interested in. Because recently I was I was away on holiday for a couple of weeks, decided to read Rob Berman's new uh, Ascent of the Goblin King yep. and see what it was like. And honestly, by the end of reading it, I, I sent Rob a message when I was on holiday and said, you've got me to do something I never thought I'd do. I think I'm going to start a goblin. goblin, goblin yeah, yeah. And, it, and it was like, I, like I've, I've, I've always loved the models, but thought, I, I can't paint that many. And then all of a sudden I'm reading this story and all these characters coming through and Grogger the hero and stuff. And I'm thinking... I could do this. This is a, even if even if I start with a small ambush yeah. one and paint up the and little that's units. The, that's the joy. Of that's slow it. grows, and yeah. that's the joy of ambush. Yeah, because wow. you can go. I'll start. Yeah, and we know where that ends. That's it. Yeah, you know, seven thousand points later, <laughs> two years later, <laughs> fifteen it. giants. Uh, same yeah. with Lucky. Uh, was it first strike? Yeah, with the vermin. I'd never quite got our vermin in space. They never quite resonated with me. It was always just a little bit. Yeah, and I read the book. Saw them belting out the ground. I'm thinking, oh my god, yeah, yeah, this yeah. They've they've got me. That's that's this ace. 
yeah. it does do that, and that's and that's the joy. We've got a kind of cadre of novels. Yeah. It, it just every, the the total is is greater than the sum of its parts. Definitely, yeah. because the book gets you starting an army. The army starts you playing a campaign. The campaign. Yeah. beds it into you in a way and and then you get your mate into it because you're just having such fun they go tell me about it so then you bring a few new players in <laughs> which gets you the tournament which gets you the right we're all going down to clash next year that's it yeah and the ball's rolling it's rolling it's rolling yeah. So yeah, we're just touching on the global campaign there Ronnie do you want to do you want to kind of explain a bit more about that now? Yeah well I mean we've obviously talked about the background but it's the, the activities yes which is the first time that because Steve Hildrew took Clash of Kings on which we, you know they we were super excited about it freed us up to go right now he's running all the logistics and getting everybody in the right place yeah. at the right time we can have some fun so Friday the day before which I think is the 7th or the 8th whatever the Friday before the yeah. Clash of Kings is we've got a big battle here I can never say it it's the battle for Gruel Valley <laughs> or the uh, Ride of the Val Ride of the Ravens which is we've got a whole load of the new Raven Sprues if yeah. you've got any bring them along with you you can add them to the battle it's a bring them battle um, you, and you still get time jump on and spray a couple up it's a great fun models I was going to have the they basically ridden out ahead of the Northern uh, Alliance force yeah. to engage the Night Stalkers and slow them down. It's a bit of the kind of you know our, our version of Thermopylae. Yeah. You know, it's the three hundred. They're coming out. They know they're going to die. They know they're going to get killed. But they're here to slow down. Yeah. Um, so it'd be an excuse to roll some dice, play with some models, drink some beer, yeah. um, <laughs> to kick off the global campaign. So it's kind of charge of the Light Brigade, charge of the Valkyries coming down the down the down the valley. Bring your units, come and hang around. There's people coming from Australia and Norway and Spain and France and uh, Italy, um, US, and four guys. So we've opened up here. We're going to have some fun. We'll go and eat some chicken wings afterwards and have some business. So right from us being able to have some IP building and welcome to Mantic HQ activities, yeah. um, all the games that are going on that weekend, we're going to upload the results. So they've got 450 battles. So we don't know whether the goodies or the baddies are winning it, but we've got more battles right there than we've ever had loaded up, I think, from 150 gamers playing six battles each. Wow. So a whole load of stats. <clears throat> because we've been able to call it, loads of global activities going on, loads of other tournaments starting to happen. Yeah. Your slow grow people going, you know, I've got 500 points yeah, here. I load it. it up. Your armada force, get it out. Yeah. Play it. There's an armada wing to the whole thing. So stories going on. I think each week there's a gateway. And when you sign up, you pick if you're on the goodies or the baddies. Yeah. And you have to pick. doesn't matter. You can still fight a battle as a baddie and it'll go as a baddie result. So if you can be an ogre. But, but you, you will only get the goodie story if you're on the goodies. Yeah. It's like you're being in the, in the tent. Okay, yeah. And it's like, good. hey, the goddamn filled the evils <laughs> are doing here and they're fighting here and they're pushing there. Here's what we've got to do to stop them. So you're either in the goodie or the baddie camp and, and, and basically... Each week it'll go. So let's say the baddies won week one, two, and three. It will be the worst possible result for the yeah. goodies. Uh, if the goodies win all three weeks, then then it'll be the weakest arrival of the Twilight Kin and, and the other stuff possible. Or if it zigzags, it'll be somewhere in between yeah. with with some gateways. But you only get your updates for the side you pick. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's yeah. good. So I you you know you you're you're in that camp. That's who you. Working with. It's interesting. I tried to do something similar when I did when we did the fight, the firefight slow yep. grow campaign, and we had the um like the kind of like the the day at the end here that we had, and all all the people came and played with their firefight armies. I tried to do something similar with that, like for as, as a campaign day, and comp comp so they sort of compress it all into one day. And I know how hard it is. So I can imagine what it's like trying to do all this. Yeah, well, and, and also trying to keep the the story relevant. Like I could, I had free reign to make up what I wanted to make up. So it was a bit different. You all know, try to keep it relevant to this world as well. So. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's quite good fun. And that's where yeah. having a you know a, a talented software engineer plus all the IP <laughs> writers plus you know uh, a big marketing team. I said big marketing, but you know, Johnny and Dan yeah. um, and Martin, we can steer. A book give quite a big playground to go at. Yeah. You know, and say, look, it's going to end up somewhere in this space. Yeah. But believe you me, you are in charge of whether it's the Twilight Kings everywhere yeah. or the Twilight Kings just here. Yeah. And there's there's six six points between the two, and you are in charge of that. Um, and and the repercussions are once that becomes a point in fact, yeah. we will then say, right, what does that mean for the next global campaign? We kind of think we know what's going to happen, but it's it's whether it's starting with this or that, and yeah. and, and and it then your bullet points go out that way. So if it keeps being, the baddies keep winning, you know, Panathor's going to start sinking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, bad stuff's going to happen. So, um, 
We're really excited about it. And I think alongside that, we've got this massive recruitment campaign. Yeah. We've got, and this is quite a, a, a big thing for us. When we did the Big Red Book last year, we still had a few green books left over. Right. And so we just said, look, if you're at the open day, take one home with you. Yeah. And then we went to Adepticon and we went to Salute and we just gave them away. Had the law. Gets you playing. And by the way, if you want to play, just go online. Do the, comp- the, the Some of the points might have changed. Yeah. Some of the stats have changed. doesn't matter. The companion's got it. Yeah, yeah. So anything that's changed there, you can actually play the game. And we were... Because we've been selling, you know, because we've been talking about Kings of War for 10 years, you think everyone that knows about it knows about it. Yeah. Not a, all the rule books had gone in 10 minutes. You know, we turn up and say, Come and get a free rule book, and there'd be yeah. a queue going, um, yeah. Can I have my free rule book? You say, Well, yeah, of course you can. You know, here you go, get in, get in. Because there's a lot of people that just need that next step, yeah. like a slow grow. It's yeah, the same yeah. thing. It's just come and help me step over the line to, to get involved in this. And so I, we just were thinking about how, you know, how do we. How do we get that going? That's all. Why, why, why don't we, we chatted about it? Said, just pay for the postage, and we'll post you out a rule book. Yeah. And so we, it's not the full thing. You don't need every army list for everything. We, so we picked our newest armies. We picked a bit of the IP, a bit of the story that's going on at the moment. Yeah. Uh, but you've got all the rules there, all the ambush rules, all the keywords, couple of magic items, a nice setup. If you want to play, here's a good choice of armies. Of course, if you want to play a goblin army from 1992, go online, use the companion. You can download a a goblin army yeah no problem but the rule book is there you can read it pay the postage we'll ship it out to you yeah. do an order we'll put it in for free just tack Fantastic, it yeah. click the button we'll add one and it's not for you it's to give to somebody yeah here you are buddy I'm going to put your address in I'm going to post it for you it's a fiver come and play this game with me yeah. I've got an army you can come and use it come and join us come and join us and I think that's that whole we're doing it digitally you know you join up for a month get a subscriber then you get a free month but the whole point is, come and look at what's going on here. Yeah, we've got Twilight King coming. We've talked about it a bit, but there's so many good things with the global campaign, with yeah. the slow grows, with the wonderful models the guys are making. We just want people to come and come and spend some time with us and enjoy it and be yeah. part of it. And, and the bigger it is, the richer it is. I think it, it, it's uh, it can't be underestimated. I think sometimes just physically having a rule book in your yeah. hand, that that step from I know nothing about it, I've got a book because. We can all go online and we can get digital versions of stuff. And I think the digital stuff is really good for people already engaged Correct. and involved and, and they know where they're going to look yeah. for it. But there's there's still something that's very tactile about having that book in your Correct. hand and looking at the beautiful artwork and the really lovely photographs of the army. And when you get started, you know, yeah. when you're playing and you're through a campaign, you just open your iPad and type in the word, you know, yeah. crushing strength. That, that's the word. It's yeah. good. I'm just you know, need to do generally with Kings of War because it's such a clean game. But, you know, it's there, it's that easy, it is that. Yeah. And, you know, we were the first that gave rules away. I remember Kings of War came, there was yeah. two editions before we even printed it. You know, we did it with Beasts of War back, as they were back in the day. Yeah. And, you know, this was where we had the little black books and we put them in every army deal and it just started building from there. Um, and kind of along the way, once you start charging for it, you forget that actually having something you can, can give away. And because, like you say, when you're starting, just yeah. being able to read it, at your own pace, not on your iPad, because when yeah. you get on your iPad, you then start watching YouTube videos, <laughs> exactly. watching your latest video, whatever <laughs> else it is. When you've got a book, that's what you sit and you read, and it's really, it's really good. And that's why we've just wanted to do that and say, look, we really want you to come and join us. I mean, there's no better way than giving you the rule book. Yeah. So, yeah. It sounds like some exciting times. I mean, like you say, it, uh, recruitment is what brings new lifeblood to the game. It's what, it's, it's what brings more people to playing in tournaments. But I think I think the campaign side of things as well. It's all it's good to remember that not everybody's a tournament player. There's a lot of people who just love to play stories out at home. And even sometimes you don't play, but you sign up. Yeah. You get your updates. You read the story, and it builds that narrative in your head yeah. that encourages you when you when you halfway through that goblin army, you've painted the first three units, and you <laughs> need a bit of yeah. you know what. And you know, I think five percent of tournament players. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for us, for them down the road, I think 5%, you know, they just have the ETC. You say, okay, how many people are there? It's a tiny tip. Yeah. Most of us play a couple of games a year, yeah. but love buying toy soldiers, painting toy soldiers, chatting with our mates about toy yeah. soldiers, playing a few more. And all of these things, even if you don't even play, signing up, registering, dreaming, painting, gluing. Feeling part of it. Correct. Yes. And, and building up your story yeah. gives you the encouragement to do it again. Yeah. Um, doing that while we're hitting the Twilight Kin, you know, which is a whole new race, which is an exciting yeah. unveil. Okay, all these things start layering up and they motivate us to, to buy and paint some more toy soldiers. 
So we've mentioned Twilight Kin a few times there, Ronnie. Mm. Uh, just dropping them into the conversation. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing them. I've seen some of the concept art. I can see now on, on your lap there, you've got some plastics. They literally came tell in us about the day them. before yesterday. Yeah. So then the first thing we wanted to do with Twilight Kin is, with another one like the obvious, we wanted to make them ours. We really wanted to take that story with the whole um, warp, you know, void. Let's do something interesting here. Let's just yeah. take them on, like we have with, with, with men in the other arms, the free dwarves. Always when you're taking the IP, you've got to go on a journey and it's got to feel natural and, and, and moving things on. And so we started really playing with this kind of, kind of slave drivers, but they're coming out of where the night stalls are. That's where they're getting their slaves from and they're crossing into the void and they're trying to take the world back to how it was when it was perfect type thing. So there's a whole narrative which you've started to see, but... But ultimately, the, what gets us is the is the plastics and yeah. working now with the. So I think the the impalers, which are the the big, I was going to say fellas, but the big yeah. the big bads who have been living in the void. They're totally consumed by the power, but they're still able to keep a kind of humanoid form. Yeah. So these are elves warped up to the to, turned up to eleven. Um, they're one of your core units that fight on the battlefield. Yeah. So we've got away from them just being, you know, pointy-eared bad elves. They are infested with the warp, with the void. Um, they are, this is one of your units. They're kind of much thinner than ogres, taller than ogres. Yeah. But they are a big, you know, heavy infantry unit that, that come across. Yeah. You've well, got, got... I was just going to say, the, the size of them, yeah, like you're saying that they are big guys. It? Because, like, traditionally elves, we think of quite small, spindly, kind of like, but it's, it's this is, these are really kind of like, yeah. And they're in there, and most of them, that live in the in the uh, void end up like that. Yeah. Okay. So they kind of mutated. They're halfway night stalker. They're elven gone wrong. Yeah. It's only the strong and powerful ones that end up like this. Yeah. So suddenly you've got two of your units. You've got your spam unit. Yeah. That's their chaff to, to to soak up damage and to to, to to attack flanks. And you've got your proper, uh, you know tough old uh, impalers that are really there to do some serious damage. And that's you know, the beautiful iconography, and this is the warp stuff. Yeah. But then you've got the, uh, the, 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 the Corsairs, and we've decided that the females are kind of more resistant to the void than the males. So the males, if they go in, a lot of them, that's why a lot of the male Corsairs stay out on yeah. the boats in, in Panathor. Uh, but if they go in, and, and everyone can turn up like that. Yeah. But if you're, if you're a bloke, you almost certainly turn up. You can, <laughs> it just gets hold of you and twists you. Um, so, so we've got it to where we thought it was a good aesthetic that, you know, the, the, the majority of the Corsairs that are in there before they warp are female. Yeah. It's like a really good, fun aesthetic and it's a good looking unit. And so these are they. So these are the Corsairs um, oh. that are now living and fighting in the uh, void and, and dropping out through the void gates and crashing out. So that's one of your medium units, elite units. That's kind of um, they're, they're not as big as these yeah. impalers, but they're in there and they're um, they're a cool regiment, more traditional unit. So now you've got a really nice dynamic mix. And then actually, when you're riding on the the sea of the void, you ride your skiff, <laughs> and these are kind of boats that come. They've got speed. We thought it was a really interesting way of adding speed, a kind of cavalry, but heavy yeah. hardy, a chariot unit that doesn't have wheels. It's got something else. And so all of a sudden we've come out, and this is as much plastic as we've ever done, like I said, yeah. from, from day one. There's four plastics, a bit of resin up at the top end for your heroes, uh, Mikel and so on, and some of the others. But there's a whole narrative. The global campaign is launching them into the world. Yeah. Uh, they're breaking out from where they are down on the South Sea. The Navy's coming, but they're also now putting in a, a threat up onto Chill. And, uh, you know... Watch this space while they're doing that. Yeah. The Night Stalkers are leading it, setting up and opening the void cages for the Twilight King to come. So I think it's lovely in terms of the, we've got a global campaign going, it's building the narrative for those people who enjoy the background, the narrative play, the story arc. We've got a brand new army coming out that's beautiful plastics, best yeah. we've ever done, I think, by by Miles with our with our own IP wrapped around it. They fight fantastically. They're a great tournament armies. The tournament players are going to be looking at them going, how do I defeat that? Or yeah. crumbs, I'm playing one of these. Um, we've got a big recruitment drive. So all the activity that we're all excited about, hey, here's a rule book, buddy. Yeah. Come and join us. Here's the campaign. Go and pick your army and download it and play it. Yeah. Um, so we're very, very, very excited about, you know, going into 2024 with Kings yeah. of War on a rip, 
you know, we've got, we've, you know, new armies coming. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> but we've already picked what's coming out in Jan Feb. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be good fun. So come back to another one of ours. Um, and, yeah. and you'll have to get me on in later in the year. Yeah, I'm being good. I'm being good. I'm not <laughs> saying anything. But yeah, we, yeah. We, we've got a rip. We've got three more armies lined up for next year. Exciting stuff. So Yeah, it's fantastic. Just like first time I've seen these. So I'm just looking at them for the first time. These look fantastic. These are going to sell like hotcakes. From a from a hobbyist perspective, I can see it's like there's stuff there that the, the good level painters are going to really enjoy painting these. Your average guys who just want to get them on the table, there's loads of detail where washes and shades will really pick them out. Yeah. Um, and I just love the aesthetic of them. It's one thing seeing the concept art, but seeing the, the physical I'm thing. Moving the concept yeah. art into the finished article is, is no mean feat. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tough old journey that you still do. Just make that. So yeah, but then you've got to make it in plastic. It's got to come yeah. out of a mold. You know, you've got to you've only got poses. Where do you put the cut lines? We don't want to make it seventy three pieces. Yeah. yeah, we could make that perfectly like that, but it's going to be a you're going to have yeah. to glue seventeen things together. We yeah. want to still get them onto the battlefield in two or three glue points. Yeah. You know, we want to make it so you can see with the skiff. Yeah. yeah, we've made it as big as we can with as much detail as we can. But your but your main, your main kind of hull of your like it is like four parts like yeah. Correct. Protect, and then it's then yeah. it's mounted up and then you get it on the base and away we go and yeah. you, you're there. So the the good guys can really take it all the way. Yeah. The rest of us, you know, mortals can at least yeah. have an army that we can we can get on the gaming table and you know, I think the ravens were our fastest ever selling plastic kit. Yeah. And you can you you can see why they're great for who doesn't want a dwarf with a hand yeah, grenade standing yeah. on top of a of a raven. Um, so I keep pointing them. That's my <laughs> the two that I two units I painted for the slow growth. So um, um but these are gonna be even more, even bigger and better than that. We've never we've not done this much plastic ever in one launch since yeah. two thousand and nine. Wow. So yeah, twenty twenty four and twenty twenty three even I suppose is still looking exciting for Mandigan for Kings of War. But what does the future hold? We always have to have a little bit of future yeah. chat. Well, I mean, we're taking this seriously. This yeah. is really coming now. We launched Firefight uh, Easter 2022. And it was very, very popular. There was a couple of things. I just didn't think it had been through quite enough of a rigorous RC yeah. thing. And I think Rob and Andy had done a brilliant job of taking a, well, making the game that was dead zone bigger, better. Yeah. In terms of slickness, I don't think anything else out there touches it. I think it's absolutely beautiful. You know, Kyle, who is our biggest Kings of War fan, our US sales guy, just has never had his head turned by anything. Um, and he just played this and he went, oh my Lord, yeah. oh my. So we just needed to kind of just polish it, refine it. It was the, the rules are really, I can say, it's just better. It's just, you know, and it, you know, we won game of the year. Yeah. So, you know, over on Tabletop, those guys gave me game of the year, and rightly so. It's an absolute yeah. brilliant engine. I, I gave it game of the year the same year as well. It was my game of the year. So, yeah. 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 And, and we all we needed to do was just make it so that when you're running a tournament, it's yeah. there. We've got beautiful ranges of plastic that was, you know, kindly supported by our yeah. Kickstarters way back when. So, we've got tanks and everything else. The other thing that I do like, I do like, particularly in a sci fi setting, at the moment, the first phase of Firefight was. Predominantly infantry with some tank support. Yes. So kind of Panzer Grenadier units is kind of where I get it to, you know, 40, 60, 80 troops, one, two, three vehicles. But adding six more vehicles is a whole load of fun, not a massive hobby thing, but no. it changes the game into a Kursk esque. It's a different game. Well, it's the same game. You know yes. the mechanics, yeah. but suddenly it's, it's a lot more fluid. There's a lot more the damage th the, and the impact. The thought process of what you're going to do yeah. is different. Yeah. yeah, correct. And so it's it's you get the best of both. You can play both. You can play one or the other. Visually, you know, we were talking just before about not all of us play games all the time. We just yeah. want to buy things and paint them and imagine what it's going yeah. to be like. And like I say, whenever I'm playing a game, my favourite moment is when I get behind the skyline and make sounds in my head yeah. going, <laughs> and you know coming through the scenery with a whole load of tanks driving I've kind of got a kind of sci-fi version of Kelly's Heroes in my head yeah now we're talking so I think this book just unlocks Firefight for the whole of next year yeah so we originally said we're going to put the rules in one and the army list in another and obviously we've instantly gone back on that because that's <laughs> the way we roll um, but there was just enough that needed to be done in both we said look here it is yeah. but we're just going to put this in the army sets and in the two player sets but it's going to allow us to really get behind it. Yeah. Uh, so during next year, you're going to see new plastics for Firefight. We did a deal with Warlord and took one of their skimming vehicles. We did a deal with Archon and took one of their tanks. Yeah. Uh, so we put more vehicles in here for in that whole vehicle thing. Now you've got brigades of vehicles with off-field battles and special stuff. So a whole load of fun. So that hobby stuff you've been doing is going to get rewarded and get played. So we've got... 
you know, that's kind of the other side of our of our hobby. We want to do to sci-fi gaming what we've done to Rank and Flank. Yeah. And I think we're able to do that now. Mm -hmm. And so watch this space. Just good yeah. stuff. <laughs> it's amazing how different a vehicle makes your army feel as well. I was playing my Enforcer army, and once I put an Interceptor in there, all of a sudden it just, like like visually, it was yeah. like all of a sudden there's this, there's this big unit coming it's, in. It's not a skirmish game, is not, it, at that point? I yeah. think vehicles take a skirmish yeah. game and sci-fi to a war game. Yeah. It's a bit like giants and war machines, but it, even more so. Yeah. And then when you go 50% of my points are vehicles, that's a different game. Yeah. Because then actually troops coming out of the back of your, your, your vehicle belting along, disloading troops, yeah. they're going to come at you with their stuff. You've got to hang on. It gives troops a different role to play. Yeah. than when you're playing with one vehicle, which is, you know, what's that threat and how do I deal with it? Yeah. But the actual real threat is their four or five units. Yeah. So. Like you say as well, it's not a big investment in hobby time as well. You get a lot of bang for your buck when you're painting a vehicle because it, it, well, it doesn't take you very long and all of a sudden you've got this big, beautiful centrepiece model type Correct. thing. You know, and that's yeah. why I've done the three, the three kits yeah. together. You get three of them with a bit of extra resin, which gives you the command vehicle or the upgrade weapon yeah. options. You get a lot of bang for your buck. It's yeah. exactly that. And you go, well, you've done the hard work of 40 figures. Uh, add one of these, and you've just increased your points by yeah. chunk. And But you've changed the way you're playing. And if you go a smaller game, when well, I can take this, that, that. Very quickly, bang for your buck, hobby time. One weekend, yeah. and you can definitely yeah double it up. Excellent. Uh, obviously, we had our online Warpath poll. Yes. Which, how, how's, I was going to say, how's that gone? How do you feel? Well, very, very well. I mean, yeah. firstly, a remarkable number of thousands of responses. Yeah. Thousands of responses. Um, which, considering we put one video out and one blog out. Um, so, yeah, multiple thousand responses. People are very keen. Yeah. Very, very keen. The STLs did very well. And the, the give us some plastics and we want to get behind this. Yeah. Blew the doors off. So, over 80% of the responses were do it mm -hmm. uh fully 55 of those were we want to get behind this give us some plastics yeah and 20 odd percent 25 percent were stls look we want to we want to be involved in this yeah so we haven't quite decided what that means other than we're going to go ahead yeah we're going to sit down and go okay what we're going to do let's let's mm -hmm. do it i think you might have got a scoop there because i don't think i've written that <laughs> blog so if we haven't written it you've heard it here first <laughs> Thank you for responding. It gave us the confidence. We were a little bit nervous knowing there's other things going on and we obviously couldn't afford to pile into plastics and then yeah. and then get the wind taken out of our sails. It's funny because I, I remember we were filming something a, a, quite some time ago and you kind of told me about this was on the horizon and you were looking at it and stuff like that. And obviously I've uh, sit tight-lipped on the whole thing. So when, when this happened... And, and you were saying, like, look, we've been working on this for a while. And, and I, I, I was like, I was wanting to get out there and see it. People like, yeah, I knew, I knew, but it's like <laughs> yeah. two, 18 months ago. This, this has definitely been in the pipeline for yeah, some time. Absolutely. Well, yeah. you, you, you know, I remember when we chat off camera, yeah. I, I kind of tell you what's coming up. And it's, uh, you know, unless he had really, we had been in every Wednesday for, yeah. you know, two months. We've just been polishing it up, taking it from a good idea into a great manuscript. I think people love the, we've added some of the command dice, some of the army formation yeah. stuff that really, is very intuitive and unlo mm. this unlocks that. Um, yeah. yeah, the eights gives you a whole spectrum of really good results, big big differentials, which we like. Yeah. So sci-fi's here. We're very excited about it. But I think for the first time, we're now big enough and ugly enough that we can do fancy and sci-fi. And, and, and do them both justice, yeah. Yeah, and then we've got kind of our board game division where we do Kickstarters with licenses, where we go, look, this is that team that's going to go and yeah. do that. We've got a full-time Kickstarter manager. He manages some of those projects. Um, and and we can we just got enough great people that we can work with in each area to do it. Yeah, we've had we've done it before with Walking Dead. You know, we yeah, kind of yeah. had that, and that might be coming back. Fingers crossed. So I keep asking. <laughs> so um, we just wait for Robert to be in a good mood, and then uh, Guy is going to go and say, "Can we just do these last few figures?" So that's that. And then my most exciting thing of all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been talking about this for about five years. Yeah. So, you know, if you think war past a long time ago, but it's just the logistics of making it happen because it's the thing. Can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> you can't do that anymore, can you? Barroom. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, right. The festive advent calendar game. It doesn't really make sense. Barroom brawl until you do that. Awesome. So, you know, I think we all know how our calendars work. You know, you find the number on the first day of December, and you are uh, you um, dip inside it, and you open the door. And after twenty four days, on the twenty fifth day, you will be able to play the barroom brawl game. Love it. Which we, which John Jack kind of came up with the idea on one of our mantic nights over in the US, and he took some of the figures from Dungeon Saga, and we, we 
turned a good idea into a good little game. And the whole idea is you go up to the places and you get a token, which is beers or food, and get it back to your table. And whoever gets enough wins. But of course, the bouncer's prowling, yeah. but the bartender's prowling. The other people are knocking you over. You can go and nick things from other people's. So it's total chaos, <laughs> but a proper game. And I just wanted to see whether we could do it. I just yeah. wanted to see, is it, can we physically make this happen? Um, and I think the... I'm trying to open the box here. I'm going to get in trouble. But the, <laughs> the, the, the thing that... He told me not to break it into. I knew we could do it when I saw that. Yeah. And that stacked up with this. Yeah. So, so we had all the logistics. You're going to get the counters. You do get the rules, but they're not in one of, behind one of the doors. Yeah. So you can either read ahead... But there is some spoilers in there. They're, they're in the, the back. You can pop in. But then each day, January Advent Calendar, you'll be able to play with your kids on Christmas Day. Um, and it's the first ever game, war game, yeah. Dungeons and Dragons game Advent Calendar has been made. Six hand-cast resin festive-themed figures. Yeah. Um, there's two on the back. The other four we've kind of blanked out, so you don't know which ones they are. There's the four party members, the four players, the barman and the bouncer. Brilliant. All with themed with Christmas hats on. You've got all the little terrain, the tables, the chairs, all the scenery you need to make it fully 3D. Counters, dice, everything you need. I suspect people buy two, one to keep. Yeah. I hope it's going to become a piece of kind of folklore. <laughs> yeah, a bit of um, Yeah, you've got the back. He's telling you what you, you do. Rules are in there. And then one to actually unlock. And everyone's going to be packed in the same way. We're actually... This all comes in done, and then we're just going to add the resin models here that we're casting up here. Yeah. Beautiful. I hope to do it again next year, but it won't be the won't be hand cast resin. It will be a you know plastic tool yeah. next year, and we're just going to work out the logistics. So, the first ever war gaming wow. advent calendar is coming. It. It's going to be up. It might be up for sale now. Very limited numbers. Yeah. So you might have already missed it, but if you haven't, go get one. Amazing. Um, and I think it's going to be good fun. I love so, the idea. I mean, even from a from a hobby perspective, if you if you kind of like, once you get your first couple of models, you you've got something to paint while you're waiting for the rest of the month well, to go put, by. We, yeah, correct. We've got a couple of which numbers. So number two, yeah, and number five are going to be models. Twenty four is the model. Um, so yeah, you've got, and, you know, got a bit they're of head start. Models, so you can get them started. Yeah. Get them on a painting table. Fantastic. So by the twenty fifth, you know, or twenty sixth, you can play the game. You've got all the models. It's a great journey. Yeah, what we we're talking about. Uh, just enjoying the joy. If you've been thinking about playing with your kids, yeah, you know, Boxing Day. Here we go. I'll page this all up. We can have a little game. It's an hour. Yeah. It's an hour to play. Oh, I love and it. You can play it two or three times, and everyone look, can play. I look forward to say, to seeing this when it when it get, gets in front of people's hands and see what they do with it. As well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so um, there we one. are. It is limited numbers. We just have to take a flyer on what the number was. So we printed yeah. a number. It's coming in. It's going out. So excellent. Grab on while you can. Yeah. So that takes us up to the end of the year then. Well, yeah, Worms yeah. is obviously yeah. hopefully live by the time we talk. But yeah, yeah, it's looking very exciting. We've got numbers we've not seen. Again, tapping into this nostalgia. You know, it's kind of why is it our game? Well, it's got guns, you know, hand grenades, uh, mm. and it's player versus player. Yeah. So it, it feels quite close to our space while being a license without being yeah. a full war game. You know, it's not it's, Walking Dead, it's not Hellboy. Yeah. It's funny because even if I look at the demographics of people that watch my channel, I'm assuming that's the, the demographics of general hobbyists. It is that age profile where nostalgia is really, really kind of like it's the right age limit, like the right age range, if you like. And you can do, I think it's a bit like we did with Dungeon Saga, which is, I'm now, my kids are growing up, and, yeah. and one of the regrets I had, I'm a bloody toy soldier company, and I never made a game that we could play with them. Yeah. And now we've made a few of those, you know, the, the card games, the invincible card games, yeah. the Walking Dead games. I, I take them on holiday, we take them out, and I say, right, we're playing this for an hour. You yeah. know, and it's got... But even more so, things like Worms is a little bit of our wargaming hobby, yeah. but in a very friendly, comical, light-hearted, fun yeah. way with a great IP, but very characterful. So you can, I don't think, you know, I think what we do when we're playing a, you know, when you go to a Clash of Kings tournament or when you're getting involved in a global, yeah. that's that's our hobby, that was ours, yeah. and forcing that onto someone that doesn't want to do it. <laughs> oh, Dan, I don't want to do that, oh, you know. But being able to just roll dice, have fun, and yeah. show off the fun aspects of our hobby, I think is really great. And I think yeah. DSO does that, Worms does that, uh, the card and dice games does that. I think this, yeah. this is doing that. And and it's partly because I've got to a certain age in my life where it's no longer necessarily about me, it's about what I can do with my friends and my yeah. family and how can we how can we share some of the joy we've had in this hobby. Yeah, I, I think I was telling you, uh, uh, my youngest son's six-year-old, 
and we, um, when we, you left the um, the the demo copy of Dungeon Saga Origins when we were doing the film, and yeah. me and him had a few games of that, and it it was that there was that light bulb moment of it, actually there's there's there's, diff, there's like these are the roots into kind of tabletop hobby that that have been missing for years, and I guess yeah. like, Worms is along there as well, really. Yeah, it, it, might, it might it might not lead to Dungeons and Dragons, it might not lead to kind of full scale. Might lead to War. to Ride, it might lead yeah, to exactly. but, it, but it just goes. Here, let's play this. Yeah. It's cool. It's cute. It's good fun. Yeah. If you don't know the IP, if you do know the IP, it's yeah. hilarious, and you've been playing it and, and, and taking it to shows and stuff, and people have been loving it. Because yeah. it doesn't matter how good the IP is, if the game's rubbish, it'll never get played. Yeah, you, get, you, yeah. you sell a few to people that love the IP, and that's it. Yeah. And gone. And that's why we've always said, if we can't make a good game, we're not doing it. Yeah. Because you know, one of the guarantees of Mantic is you'll enjoy playing what we built yeah. from Kings of War through that through Worms through Hellboy, each one of them is innovative, each one of them is exciting. Yes, we could have done twice as many, but they probably would have been half as good. Yeah. And I'd rather do it properly and nicely and well and, and stand behind it and say, you know, we're going to keep going until it's perfect. Well, I think that's a good ethos to have. Yeah. And a good spot to kind of wrap this up as well. So thank you, Ronnie, for your time. I appreciate, you um, appreciate your support on this. And um, we will definitely be back towards the end of the year, maybe with, with a few more surprises and a little bit more to uh, what the future holds for Monday Games. You're always welcome here, Andy. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for participating in the Slow Grow. Uh, I hope you're enjoying it. Come join the global campaign with us. Get yeah. one of your mates involved. Give them a rule book for Christmas. <laughs> and um, thanks, everybody. Thank you.